It's another Sunday evening. Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of The Probe. Tonight we are focusing on our colleges of education. Well, it's been in the news for some time. We've been talking about CTAG, TTAG, Prinkoff, among others. But really, we'll not just focus on that strike which started on the 1st of August. For various reasons, they've been calling uh, for some things to be done for them. Tonight, we are getting deeper into everything, the journey so far, and then we'll take a look at the status of our colleges as we speak. We know that in 2022, government awarded a 300-bed capacity. That's the hostel block to 45 public colleges of education. What's the status of it? The government, through the Education Ministry, stated that the project was due to the upgrade of the Colleges of Education into four-year Bachelor of Education degree awarding institutions. Then we go on, yeah, the reconstruction or the construction of the hostel blocks across the colleges is estimated to cost 485 million CDs and is being funded by the Ghana Education Trust Fund and the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission, GTEC. That's what we were told. Then the project is set to help accommodate the increased number of students and improve teaching and learning. Is that happening? That's one thing we'll be taking a look at. The project is expected to be completed in 15 months and hand it over to the colleges by August 2023. The last I checked, we are in the second week of August. We're we'll finding out if that has been done. And then in May 2022, the minister stated that to ensure swift delivery of the hostel facilities, GTEG and GetFund were making necessary attempts to mobilize a loan of at least 10% of the contract sum for each contractor so as to complete the project. Where are we with that? Then in April 2022, the Conference of Principals of the Colleges of Education, Brinkhoff, we know threatened to withdraw their services over accommodation challenges. That came up, I'm sure you do recollect. Then Prinkoff also warned of dire consequences for teacher training if urgent steps are not taken to address what they say is an infrastructure crisis. It looks like that still lingers. Then they blame the situation on the increase in student admissions without corresponding upgrades in infrastructure. Then that's following the shift from diploma to degree awarding institutions. That's very key. But how do we do this without the corresponding infrastructure for such a project? Before the implementation of the four-year BA program in the colleges, principals advised the Ministry of Education and then the then minister to tread cautiously on that path they were taking. The position of Prinkoff back then was that government should defer the implementation from 2018 to 2019 so that some basic infrastructure would take care of the numbers that will come up in the years. But that advice, we're told, fell on deaf ears. What really is the situation? Is that the impact we are seeing now? That and more is what we'll be taking a look at. Well, we know uh, the status of some of these um, you know, projects that were awarded back then. Um, yeah, I'll have the slides and we'll go through them. I'm told that up until now. So this is where we are for the A. We've categorized them into about A, B, C, or D. And the, the, for this category, um, 11 in total, that's, we have the names of the colleges here, all of them, Presbyterian Women's College of Education in Agogo, SDA College of Education in Koforidia. We are told the contractor is on site and work is progressed, and that's what our checks reveal, 11 in total. These ones, the contractor is on site, and of course, work is progressive. But how about the others? Let's go to category B. Uh, the contractor started, but we are told has abandoned the work. So in 2023, it appears that these ones have been abandoned, including St. Ambrose College of Education. If you are in any of these colleges, I think it's a good time for you to reach out to us. Let's go into the next category quickly. And for C, the contractor visited the site, but has not started work. These are 16 of them. The Abetifi Presbyterian College of Education, we have Ada, we have Akachi, we have EP College, Fosu College of Education, Gambaga, Holy Child College of Education, and Jassikan College of Education. There's more, 16 of them. The contractor visited the site, but has not started work. What really is the state? Is it that these contractors have not been paid? What exactly is the situation? How about the 11 that work is progressing? It means that we are not meeting that August deadline. That and more is what we are looking at tonight here on the probe. Plus, of course, that strike. If you're affected by it, we've got it all covered tonight. Professor Samuel Atintono is the national president. Prinkoff, he joins us via Zoom. We have Jephthah Nanakwame, the newly elected national president, Teacher Trainees Association of Ghana, TTAG. We also have Prince Ohiming 
Obing Hima. He is the National President, Colleges of Education, Teachers Association of Ghana, CTAC. I'm sure you've been hearing him throughout the week. Uh, you get to hear him more tonight. And we, of course, we have Larry K. Agbado, his editor, Teacher Education Journal. You also put everything in perspective for us. Gentlemen, you're welcome. We'll get talking shortly here on the probe after this quick turnaround. I am MFA Apau, and the probe is live on the Joy News channel. Also on Joy 99.7 FM. We are on myjoyonline.com and all our social media platforms and affiliates across Ghana's 16 regions. Do join us with your thoughts and comments. If you're a teacher trainee, you're affected by this, a parent amongst others. Do reach out. We're right back. <laughs> Imagine a family without a home. Imagine a song without a voice. Imagine a church without prayers. Imagine a government without citizens. Imagine democracy without journalists. Imagine a world without the media. Life is full of issues and stories about people, communities, and governments. Welcome back to the probe here on the Joy News Channel, also on Joy 99.7 FM. And today we are focusing on our colleges of education. Well, the strike and then also the status of these um, colleges that we have in Ghana, colleges of education. What really is the status? And I've introduced my guest to you. I have uh, him, um, Mr. Uh, Larry uh, Kiagbado, editor, uh, teacher education journal. He is on Zoom. Uh, we also have uh, CTAG. Uh, he's with me in the studio. We also have TTAG. I have the two tags uh, in the studio. And then also we have Prinkoff, uh, Mr. Atintonu, also Professor Atintonu, joining us um, via Zoom as well. So two Zoom and then two in studio. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me check my Zoom as well uh, to be sure that um, my, my sound is working. Prof and Larry, how are you doing? We're doing great. Good evening, MFA. Thank you very much uh, for your time this evening. So I, I will talk about um, uh, the status of education, for which reason we've gathered. But first, I, I've seen a letter uh, from the Ministry of Education, and this is signed by Professor Yaira Jakaji, PhD, Director for Tertiary Education at the Ministry of Education. It reads, request for attendance at the Colleges of Education in the month of August 2023. And this letter is written to the Director General, Ghana Tertiary Education Commission, and it's saying it has come to the attention of the Ministry of Education that the Colleges of Education Teachers Association of Ghana, CTAC, has defied the Labor Commission's ruling on the 2nd of August 2023 regarding the ongoing strike by the union. This action of CTAC has halted academic work at the public colleges of education. It goes on to say that in this regard, Honorable Minister directs through your office that principals of public colleges of education should take and submit details of tutors at post within the month of August to enable the ministry to make some critical decisions concerning the issue, while the attendance should be submitted before salaries are validated for the various colleges of education in August. And this directive, we are told, is for strict compliance by all principals. Professor Atintono, uh, thankfully, uh, you are a principal as well, and you lead the pack. Really, uh, has this letter come to your attention? And what really is this about? Um, first of all, uh, permit me to extend uh, good evening to all my colleagues, the 46 principals of uh, college education across the country, and I'm greeting to the CTAC uh, president and the TAC president in the studio there, and of course, Larry. Um, yes, uh, MFR, I think uh, 
He says our tutors and um, battle on a strike. But before they started in the middle of July, uh, that's last month, they sent warnings that they were going to be on strike if uh, they have conditions of service that have been approved by May 2nd, where they signed some memorandum of understanding with government as well as uh, all the stakeholders involved, GTEC, uh, Print Corp, we signed, uh, Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. Uh, let me indicate that these issues have been on the table since 2021. It's a normal practice that uh, workers negotiate for their condition of service. Uh, indeed, uh, I was happy and I have been part of the conversation or the negotiations that took place since 2020, 2021, 2022. And uh, I was happy by May this year we signed that document. Now, what led to where we are and the CTAC and back on their strike is basically the fact that when Fair Wages and Salaries Commission uh, wrote the letter to the Minister of Finance in May, uh, accepting the agreed condition of service for CTAC members, uh, it is the case that we didn't get a response from the Minister of Finance but we've been working. I mean, we know the situation in the country. Uh, they got those things based on some negotiations that they had. We got to some statement which they went to National Labor Commission and eventually came back. Uh, once it's an award, we are actually uh, compelled by that to respect it. And uh, we didn't disagree. That's fair with this and Salaries Commission, including the government side. Problem then is the letter didn't come, and CITAC thought that they delayed and they were not acting on it. But when they send the warning letters, we had an engagement by 19th of uh, last month to tell them that they should hold on while the processes are taking place. Uh, unfortunately, the way government works is that it takes time. So by 30th of July, uh, government has actually responded, that's Minister of Finance, accepting that the thing that they are asking for are legitimate and they would be paid. But we saw some errors in it, and CETAC themselves drew our attention to those things. Uh, we have to work with uh, our regulator, that's uh, Ghana Test Education Commission, uh, GTEC, to rectify those anomalies. So we anticipated that uh, CETAC would then hold on while these processes are going. But of course, they are labor union. They said their council said until they get the money, they were expecting that by July they should have the money. Uh, it is in the time now. So fast that, forward, that fast forward, Professor. Me. Fast forward, Professor Tintono. I want us to deal directly with this particular letter, knowing the background, because we've been dealing with this for some time now. So fast forward to this particular letter. Yeah. Have we started compiling? Does it mean that if um, CTAC members who are not at post, they will be not they will not be paid in August? What exactly is this directive for? I, I need uh, to give the background so that people understand. Uh, uh, let's get the understanding. Not everybody's privileged to what has happened to get her to where you are. So the point where we are, when the Minister of Education uh, wrote that letter through the Director of Test Education, it is based on the fact that uh, we have already started the process. Mm -hmm. So government have accepted. We are working through to process their feelings and uh, we're hoping that by August and then they should get it. So this letter, as it is, for us as Spring Corp, uh, we received it written to GTEC, and GTEC okay. has also written to us. We have had some engagement with the uh, CETAC uh, leadership, and uh, Prince is in the studio there, appealing to them that as far as labor issues are concerned, normally, uh, even when you have your case, you don't push the employer to the point where we are. Uh, you should negotiate in what you call a good fit. Mm. So when one is twisting the other's arm, in this case, CTAC is on strike, uh, it doesn't work well for us to continue to, uh, to process or negotiate. But of course, you would have seen a letter from National Labor Commission requesting two times. The first time that they should come for a meeting which was supposed to have happened about two weeks ago, uh, CTAC didn't turn up. Uh, they have certain excuses, 
And of course, the last meeting was supposed to be on the night or so. Uh, they again said they couldn't uh, come for the meeting. We have a meeting on the 15th. My principal position is that in all these things, it is our students who are disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. Students are in school, we are feeding them, no teaching is going on. So we have appealed to them to take a second look while government tries to process. Uh, of course, once the Minister of Education has written to us, uh, SITAC themselves have seen the letter that have responded, uh, we have appealed to them and we hope that they will suspend the strike so we don't get to a point where uh, what they have asked uh, principals to do should happen. So uh, when you are fighting, we definitely we are in the, uh, the same space with them. Okay. So the video, we appeal to them to still suspend the strike while the processing of their salaries or all the things that they are asking for are done. Thank Th you. Thankfully, um, Prince is here, like you mentioned, and we'll get into it. But briefly, you didn't tell me if this is directly. I, I need a direct, uh, you know, uh, response to this particular question as to whether this directive from the Ministry of Education is to your outfit not to process them so that they will not be paid. Is that what it means? Or the work they didn't do well, in August yeah, because of the, the strike? I mean, the, the letter is in the public domain, and that's the position of the, the ministry. Uh, we've gotten the letter. But as I said, the, at the same time, we are processing uh, whatever they, are, they have requested for, and we hope that we don't get to that point where we don't validate them. As okay. we speak now, there's no... Uh, PVs for us to validate. Okay. Prince, really, um, we've seen letters from the NLC. You've raised the concerns about what your demands were. Amongst others, there were meetings that your outfit did not show up. There have been several calls on CTAG to at least return to the classroom, knowing the effects your strike is having on your students. And all these are falling on deaf ears. Now you risk your August salary. Good evening, and thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Let me use this uh, opportunity to reach out to the over 2,000 CETAC members across the 46 public colleges of education in Ghana who are doing the listening and are watching on various platforms. Uh, it's important to see that where we have reached a CETAC, if you look at the trajectory of events from 2003, when we started with the diploma program, the first batch coming out in 2004 and uh, 2007, and we had to wait, I mean, put pressure, do a lot of advocacy till 2012. It means from 20, uh, 2004 up to 2012, we existed without any form of identity. Mm. We were characterized with identity crisis. Our colleagues, who ought to have been promoted in the GES, that was the time GES stopped promoting our people. So people would have become district directors and what have you before going on retirement. But we had to be in that limbo up to 2012. And even 2012, when the act was, pa was passed, we had to wait, push, and back on strike, do a lot of things till 2016, before we were migrated from the GES payroll to the, you are not new to the conversation, here and you, you've become more or less a queen mother here. <laughs> this place has become more or less a, a, a palace. 2016, fast forward, we were migrated. We had to, I mean, embark on strike and other things before the token, the salary that the law prescribed that they should pay to the tutors was paid. And uh, 2017, we had to negotiate for our first condition of service. We negotiated that in 2017. 2017, it wasn't paid. 2018, 2019, 2020, it wasn't paid. So when we started making noise that we were sick and tired of the unfairness, then government said they had no money to pay the arrears from 2017 to 2020. Mm -hmm. So they worked out what they felt was something good for us, compensation, okay. and slapped us without compensation. Helpless as we were, mm -hmm. we had to accept it with a promise that as soon as we crossed that bridge, they were going to open fresh negotiation for us in 2021. So 2021, when we started in November, we signed as part of the rules of engagement that we were going to finish the negotiation within six weeks. That was when uh, Dr. Kwapong uh, was the chief executive officer of Fair Wages. And uh, the six weeks turned out to be over a year 
ran into two years, 2021, till recently when we felt tired and we took the matter to the National Labor Commission for them to activate their compulsory arbitration process. Okay. In fact, Emifa, you look at what we've gone through. CETAC, I think that, uh, like my members, we are prepared to die on the cross of conviction that we've been sidelined, we've been maligned, cheated for far too long. People have sacrificed to make the colleges what they are. People are retiring. And we show you salaries of people. I mean, you look at the, I mean, what we are how going through. It? How much is it? What's the range? How I low? think... Uh, how low? How high? You look at people <laughs> who would have uh, gone to the universities to teach. Others have gone to do PhDs and they are there teaching just because they have love for, passion for preservative teacher education. And you look at the salaries they are taking. It's nothing good to write home about. Professionally, I would have mentioned, but I wouldn't like to. I understand. Mm. So we look at all these things. We've embarked on strike, and the strike is legal because we went through processes. Look, what's happening is repetition of the 2018 scenario, where my greetings to Dr. Matthew Hukupempe, my uncle and big brother. We, we, we squared it off at times. We said we, the uh, ministry had no right whatsoever to pretend to be doing the work of the National Labor Commission in Ghana. It is solely the National Labor Commission that is vested with the power to declare strike legal or otherwise. But, have, but at this point, we've, we've seen the, we've heard the NLC's intervention the NLC, in this matter. And even that, you're disregarding them. The NLC, we haven't disregarded. I want to make it clear that it's not true that CETAC refused to attend the invitation that the National Labor Commission extended so to what's us. The, what's the truth there? What happened was we sent a letter. When the National Labor invites you, it's, it, it lies within our, our constitutional power to respond in writing if we are not clear with the issues. So that's what we did. And our position was clear that there wasn't any issue to be settled. What remained to be done was compliance of the orders that the NLC themselves had come out with, which government was refusing to comply. So we felt in all the powers that he had, they could have gone to the I mean, upper court, superior court, to take orders, further orders, to compare government to, to, to uh, as it were, comply. And in doing so, you don't need to sit down. CETAC had no role in all of these things. We wrote to them, and they sent us another invitation. After a broad consultation with our members, I mean, the structures and our lawyer, we decided that we're going to go. We responded. So in all of these things, if somebody says we didn't go, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, it's misplaced. We acted in, in, in the line of law. We acted in the line of law. So I am saying that uh, coming back to that particular letter, mm -hmm. we've even heard worse things, whispers at certain corridors, that all tutors are going to be sacked. Mm. It's only in Ghana that if somebody owes you and you go to him for your money, he says he will arrest you and imprison you. But knowing the conditions, they've said, let's negotiate. Let's talk about this. We agree we owe you. It's not as if we don't. But let's go through the processes so that your students do not suffer. You've done this over the period. At least um, they, they are going to pay. Why then do you let us all suffer? Then in the end, you come back to square one. It's extremely important that we use this strike to make a loud statement. Okay. <clears throat> that the National Labor Commission exists to give orders that are supposed to be complied by both government and employees. Okay. And that is just what we want the National Labor Commission to do. Because the issue goes on and off. It's been around since 2021, uh, up to date. Okay. You look at, apart from the conditions of service, we've raised other critical issues that I'm surprised the other stakeholders are silent about. This all year round teaching that we are doing, we had uh, a dialogue last year, chaired by Ms. Elizabeth Ohene. Mm -hmm. Joy, all the other people were there. Yeah. We brought stakeholders, vice chancellors of the five affiliate universities. TAG was there, all the principals. CETAG was there, the non-teaching staff, they were there. We brainstormed and then looked at the way forward, the challenges. And what CETAG has raised in, as, as, as our challenges, are not any different from what we raised over there. The conditions that have necessitated that we need to have this all year round teaching. I mean, fantastic suggestions were made, we presented, 
uh, what have you, to cabinet through the minister. What has happened to the white paper that came out? Mm. Nothing. And once the attack talks, it's as if we, we, we want to run the system down. Yeah, we've we, been described amongst others as rebels and all that, I'm sure. Exactly. Uh, know that. But let me bring in your students, and um, then we can go on to Larry as well. Then we can talk about the state of the colleges, for which reason um, this strike, at least. We've seen some of the reasons why you're going on strike, and that includes the state of these colleges of education. At least you've seen what your teachers um, have been saying. They've raised concern. But really, let me talk about the impact of this particular strike. It started on the 1st of August. How has it been on campus, you'd say? Well, uh, thank you very much. Let me greet my co-panelists and also the members of the Teacher Training Association of Ghana across the country, and also your viewers, Oliver. Now, talking about this particular strike action, in fact, it worries a lot that a problem that has happened over years is still on the table and that stakeholders are not able to find lasting solutions to it. At a point in time, they would reach a compromise for the discussion to continue where the teachers will come back to the lecture halls. But it bounces back again. And that is quite worrying to be in a college of education as it stands now. Mm -hmm. Now, if we are to delve into what the students are going through at the moment, it is very pathetic. It is very, very pathetic. As it stands now, level 300, since I guess one, we're left with two weeks to complement the first semester okay and you would love to know okay. yes there are exams you'd love to know that they started the first semester long ago that will bring us back to the all year round teaching that mr obinima is talking about and they have spent a lot of time at home mm. level 300 and even all levels apart from level 100 who have been constant in the college when they start the semester we all spend more than close to two three months at home doing nothing with breaks in the semester now, these students were left with two weeks, one week for full contact hour and one week for revision mm. before they could start the exams effective tomorrow. As it stands now, those two weeks were lost. Nothing at all was done. And they are going to sit for papers that they have not had revision with their tutors. You can, you can imagine the massive impact it's having on them, yet we are expecting them to produce in the examination. And there will be no streamlined measure to say that probably the uh, the marking scheme or something can be adjusted to see the challenges that they pass through. Okay. More to this, this strike action is plunging us into a crescendo of anxiety. We don't know our fate as student teachers <coughs> in the country mm. that today is a strike, tomorrow they are back, today is a strike. But I'm sure you've sought to get some sort of answers also. At least you've heard CTAC. At, for most people, they have valid reasons for which they are doing this. But really, is the form and the procedure that they've taken. Is there any way that you're also speaking up in terms of um, asking those who matter to do what they ought to do? Exactly. Exactly. When they started this whole strike action, we had to quickly run to GTEC and plead with them for them to come in and intervene, what engaging all... In fact, we, we met Professor Lee through writing. Mm -hmm. He told us that he was also pushing to engage the other stakeholders on the matter. But as it now, there has not been any significant development. Mm -hmm. And something we have not worked for, something we have not caused, but we happen to be the sufferers of this whole action. Mm -hmm. Whether CETA goes on strike or they come back, we are going to either benefit or we are going to lose. Mm -hmm. No other stakeholder involved in this is going to be the SAFRA. But it looks like um, government is doing something about the situation in terms of writing to um, the heads of the schools, for instance. You've seen the letter that I've just read, that they may be punished for the action that they are taking. Amongst others, we're even hearing that they may be sacked as well. Is that the way to go, you'd say, as students? Do you the think question this is the way to deal with the situation? The question we would ask is that the action that CITAC is taking, is it legit? Is it legal? If it's not legal... They issued a warning statement that they would declare a strike action if their concerns were not met for a time they placed ahead. Yet nothing at all was done. There could have been a national address by the president or the minister or the stakeholders involved in this matter to bring them to the table before we could get to where we are now. But if we all sit and have some normal, you know, dex uh, to dex conversation and watch it happen, the question we ask ourselves is that, are they just coming back? Now, I ask you that, what is our fit as student teachers? Mm. If the teachers are going to be sacked right now, do we continue to be in the hostels and be eating and sleeping, doing nothing? Mm. We don't have a take to say whether CTAC should be sacked or not. That is why I want to say that if what 
whatever they are doing is it's legal or legit. The government and the stakeholders, they know better and they know much, and they can address the matter. And that is what we've been looking for. And that's a lasting solution, not just a compromise for them to come back. At this point, we would love that they reach a compromise and come back and continue the discussion they are having with the stakeholders. Okay. Nonetheless, a lasting solution. It can't always be this. Okay. Well, let me bring in Larry, uh, because we need to get into uh, the state of the Colleges of Education itself as well, so that uh, we do not um, just dwell on the strike as well. But I'm hoping that there will be a way forward. But briefly, uh, Prof, uh, let me find out from you. Now, hearing your students as well, they have genuine concerns about what is going on. Are we hopeful that by 15th of August, that particular meeting that will be held will definitely address this issue such that um, our students will get their teachers back in the classroom and those who write exams will be prepared for, for that amongst others so we have normal teaching and learning return or restored in these 46 colleges of education. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the exams we are going to start tomorrow. So we've done all arrangements to go ahead with the examination irrespective of uh, the strike. Uh, all principals are put in place. Alternative arrangements uh, to make sure that regulation and supervision goes on. Uh, it's not the first time that we have faced this situation. The last time SITAC went on strike, we had a similar situation where we arranged and the student wrote their exam. So the student will make a for alarm on that. Uh, I, as much as I appreciate the uh, Prince that the SITAC <laughs> concerns, but as I said, uh, we're all in this country. As principal, we are worried about it. And we've set time in the game that whatever they're asking for is legitimate. But the point we are raising here is appealing to them. We do not have to look for or you know, ask for whatever is due us in a manner that we have to go on a strike. Okay. So we are still appealing to them. And I'm very hopeful that uh, Wednesday we should be able to resolve this and then they'll get back to the classroom. Okay. L let me now delve into uh, the state of our colleges. Really, that's of a lot of uh, concern for me as well. Taking a look, you, you, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that. He wants, to, uh, he wants an intervention on the exams. I'll come to you on this shortly, Jephthah. But let's start with the issue about the state of your colleges because sure. it's very important as well. Um, there was a promise that was given. We're supposed to have handed over these um, colleges in August 2023. We are in August and we're dealing with a strike, yet these colleges have not been handed over. Larry, you've been following this, at least you've, you've been following the presentation that we've been, we've been having um, over the period on this particular situation in all 46 colleges. With regards to the infrastructure situation, help us paint a picture on what the situation is, because I'm very concerned that there was something that was supposed to be done, yet we are not seeing that happen. Are we neglecting our colleges of education? Uh, I think this is not the first time we are having this conversation. Uh, we've had this conversation on several occasions on your platform. Uh, my, my key message always has always been the fact that government needs to give some kind of priority or attention to our teacher education institutions, most especially the 46 public colleges of education. If government should give probably some 30-40% of attention to these colleges, I'm not sure we'll be having these conversations over and over again. You see, with, with the issue of the 300-bed hostel facilities that were supposed to be handed over to the 45 colleges by August 2023, mm -hmm. as we speak, we don't even have a single college yeah. uh, that has got the 300-bed hostel project completed. You can, you can talk of Accra College, of Atintonu's college that I think I visited a site with him just about two weeks ago, mm. and they are almost, I think, on the first floor or so. Mm. Uh, other colleges too, I think St. John Bosco's college is also quite impressive. You presented the data yourself already. Aside these two colleges, we have quite a number of colleges that even the contractor has not even visited sites yet. And these are projects that were expected to be handed over to the colleges in August 2023. And so if you look at the data on your screen right now, the whole of the option A, about 11 colleges, you're saying that the contractor is on site and work is progressing. And even at this stage, uh, you, you get somewhere about 5 10% work progress. Yeah. They are probably at the foundation level and the rest. So uh, the category B, for instance, where it says that the contractor has started work and abandoned work, you go to these colleges 
and the contractor has packed his tools, there's no one on site to work, nothing. And this, this project, if they were completed, admissions currently are ongoing. We have applicants who are applying to go to the college somewhere in January next year. And you ask yourself, where is the space to accommodate these applicants next year, January? So, so the situation in the colleges is, is still not different. It's still the same. And it's quite worrying. Mm. Well, Prof. Antonio, I'm sure you can, you can give us some answers because you um, deal directly uh, with government, those who matter. GTEC, we know, was supposed to be funding. We know that there was funding also coming from Get Fund on this. Amongst all the issues that you have to deal with, some time back we had to deal with feeding uh, for your students. Now we are dealing with infrastructure. They were supposed to have been handed over in August. And looking at the figures, not encouraging at all. Even the A that we have contractors on site, that category, it's just about 5% completion. What really is the issue, Prof? Uh, thank you very much. And, uh, it's unfortunate uh, that the infrastructure situation, especially uh, accommodation-wise, uh, we're still where we are. Uh, bear in mind, we got to where we are today because in 2018-2019, the colleges started a new program that we call four-year bachelor of education program of which the first batch graduated in 2022. Now, before uh, we introduced a four-year bachelor education program, we used to have three cohorts, and that is, they were diplomas. In the third year, students were never in a, uh, they were never on campus, so they would be away and then free some space for level 100 and 200. But when we introduced these four years, it means four batches are now going to be on campus. So yes, somewhere in 2020, uh, the Ministry of Education, together with Princorp, we met and we raised the issue that we need to do something to sort of mitigate this kind of a uh, problem. Mm -hmm. uh, they started the projects. Unfortunately, COVID came. That didn't help us. But by 2022, they awarded this new project that you are showing the status of them. And we are convinced as Princorp that uh, they would sort of uh, facilitate it from government side. They are labeled special uh, projects, special projects in the sense that they, they anticipated that within one year, we could have completed them. Mm -hmm. Now, the contract was awarded to contractors on the basis that they have the capacity to deliver all these 40, uh, 43 in all, uh, because three of the colleges already have something, uh, some projects, so they were okay. not included. Yeah, so... Unfortunately, as it is shown in the data, the Supreme Court that picked up that uh, status report. Uh, only 11 of them where things are happening. I sit in Accra, as Larry said. Uh, the contractor gave us uh, July this year, we're in August. It's actually is one of the fastest projects you have seen because it's on the second floor and we are nowhere near completing. So, Prinkoff has raised issues with GTEC and Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. And what they have done uh, from the report that we got was they called the contractors, but those who never uh, started in the other colleges, and uh, they have asked them if they don't have the capacity to go on, they may have to reaward them. Okay. But as they said, currently we have two badges on campus. Going forward, the CTAC strike, they have raised the issue of the all year round, they will not do it. It's not helping anybody. So we think that government have to hasten up and support us to have those infrastructure. But beyond that, we have to have a national conversation and uh, bring up, we will come out with a, a certain calendar or some opportunity. For example, there's no reason why where we are, all our students must necessarily be on campus. That's where the okay. problem is coming from. Okay. We are testing institutions and we are saying all the students might be in residence. So we have this problem on our hands not because we don't have lecture spaces, but because we have a policy which says it should be in residence. We have to begin to look at that one. And I'm happy TAC is here and CTAC is there. And uh, we are having a conversation where we can all start. We may have to introduce some form of some students staying outside at some point that will allow everybody so that while they are trying to deep out the infrastructure, we can then have our lectures going on instead of doing this kind of uh, having two batches. Uh, it's causing a lot of problems for us.
at the moment. Okay, Thank well, th that, that shift system that people, of course, we know we've heard um, concerns being raised about that particular system, but really, um, how hopeful are you? At least you've been checking all the 43 uh, the colleges who are supposed to be having this 300-bed hostel facility. Whilst we have that dialogue about whether we should have all the students on campus at a go, how hopeful are you that this project will be completed anytime soon, such that next year, by this time, we don't gather again, talking about infrastructure in our colleges of education? Yeah, so we, I think the one year is no more possible, that's this year. Mm. Uh, but I'm hopeful that with the 11 that we have shown on the data, we collected it. Uh, the contractors are on site. Uh, the good news is we followed up with GTEC and to Ministry of Education, and those contractors who have actually started work, they have paid them, and they are okay. back on site. Uh, the hesitation was that some of the contractors didn't want to start because get funds, they thought there was no money and therefore they would not be paid. But recently, all those contractors who have started something, they have actually been paid. So with the conversation that uh, GTEC have had with the, the rest of the contractors, we are very hopeful that they will get back to site. So are there new timelines? Because we knew that it was supposed to be handed in August. What's the new timeline after the engagement with these contractors uh, for these projects? Yeah, well, this is a fiscal infrastructure that they are developing. And construction doesn't take one day. So new timelines, our conversation with uh, GTEC and the of the is to give them at least a maximum of one year. Because some of them, if you okay. look at it, they have not started. The Accra College of Education, that one within the next six months, if the contractor is resourced, uh, he's going to progress. And there are a few of them that are up to that state like I said, John Bosco, I know a crowd college and a few others have actually advanced. They can finish within six months. But the rest of them, where they have not started, mm -hmm. we are appealing and we have had a conversation with the GTEC to ensure that one year stand the issue. But as I said, uh, even if we finish this 350 capacity, uh, it will not still solve our infrastructure problems. It shouldn't be look like if we finish the 300 bed capacity, then our problems are solved. No, okay. it won't. We okay. have to look for alternative ways of addressing this, this, this problem. Mm. Friends, so looking at um, the infrastructure situation, last year we talked about that, the last time we interacted, the issue about you working all year round because of the infrastructure deficit came up. How are, then, are we dealing with it? Because we are hearing now that another one year uh, we have to take a look at um, you know, getting these facilities ready. It doesn't look like it's going to be ready anytime soon. So you're prepared to, to go on. What really are the interim measures we're putting together in terms of this all year round teaching? And it doesn't look like you're getting the comments rate pay for it. Yes, for us, we have served notice and it's part of the things that we are, uh, I mean, that has brought us where we are. We say that at the SHS level, when they came face to face with that overwhelming situation, where they saw that the students they were, uh, who had completed uh, BEC, all of them could not be in school, and there was the need mm -hmm. for them to have double track system. What did they do as far as staff recruitment is concerned? They opened the portal, consciously recruited teachers. So they will have teachers who will teach this track, and teachers who will teach the other track. That's what they did. Now, like what the group prof said, when we started in 2018, the beard, and we envisaged that the number was going to be overwhelming, what have we done? Because we have the same teachers that we think we can conveniently put the students into two groups. One group stays home, and when they come for the teachers, they don't get tired. The same group of teachers who teach won't be paid. And when we, we raise issues, we are, we are, we are uh, I mean, doomsday, doomsday, what a few. I think that... For us, as people on the ground, this is even affecting quality. And we should be gatekeepers of teaching and learning. We should be proud of the performance of the teachers that we are training. And we are saying that this is affecting quality. Okay. Like what the TAC president rightly said, how do you expect a student who is running a semester come to campus for eight weeks, go and stay home for sometimes two months, two to Two to three months. Some, when they go home, they sell cement. They are farmers. Some come back and they have virtually forgotten even the course codes and the course uh, titles of the courses they were running before they went to. And I don't blame them. I sympathize with them. 
We should look at the issues in the face and address the issues. And somebody has to bear the cut. We should stop this cosmetic approach to solving the issues in the college. The government has invested in teacher education. We agree. But that is not enough. So we are saying that uh, it's good, it's refreshing that this time Prenkov and the other people are prepared to come around. Because this was contained in the communique, mm -hmm. contained in what was sent to the cabinet. The white paper you talked yeah, about. Yeah, the white paper. Mm -hmm. It was contained in there. So we are saying that we need to sit around, have a conversation. Like what did Riley say? There is no law that says that all students in a given tertiary institution have to be modernized. You go to Legon, you go to UCC, you go where? The same parent has two kids. They complete their SHS. One goes to KNUST, one goes to the college. The one that goes to KNUST, suddenly the parent has money to go and rent accommodation for that student so he can attend classes, can attend lectures. But the one who goes to the college, there is no money. Education, we need to know that it's an investment. The parent, the government, civil society organization, if we want quality education, and the current curriculum we have is fantastic. So for me, my heart bleeds when I see that we're not doing right and the benefit we stand to get from the, 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 the strict adherence to the, I mean, what the current curriculum says. If we don't get it, posterity will judge all of us. It's on the strength on that that we are saying that. We, should, we have even been charitable enough as to suggest something. We're just not saying it's not good enough. We won't do it. We said we should adopt the in-in-out-out system. Okay. The student comes to campus for the first time where he doesn't know his bearing, the place is entirely new to him. You let a student be on campus. He will be at the hall. And that Se was not taken? Second year. It's something we have given out for free. Something we've given out. And instead of them taking this, they are threatening us with salary freeze. Threatening us with, with, with what have you. We are saying that if all of us, over 2,000 members, are sacked, we are imprisoned. And then the system is corrected for other group to come and take our position. We'll be proud Ghanaians and posterity will judge us right. So this, this one will not coerce us into submission. We know what we are going through. We know what we want. So we are saying that we should adopt the in-in, out-out system. So that by third year, you would have known your bearing. Then you'll be able to, uh, your parents would have prepared economically, having gone through the first two years, if you are also sponsoring yourself, you would have also done some savings, you would have done your connections, you and you have money, money, so you can rent when you are on the third year. Okay. When you are in the fourth year, you can also be outside. Then all the students can be on campus, will start the semester, and then we'll have the mandatory inter-semester break for the tutors. Remember, people should speak for the tutors. We are other people's husbands, other people's children. And imagine somebody, every group, that comes, you are teaching two or three courses, sometimes core. My good self, an example, I taught a course introduction to semantics to my students. All the over 200 students, it's a core program for the primary students, I had to teach it alone. And I mean, experienced people or research will tell you if one person is teaching over 200 students, what will be the, what will be the I mean, effectiveness yeah. of even monitoring giving them assignment, doing... So we sacrifice quality for Definitely all of them. Definitely quality is, exactly. is compromised. Exactly you know? the point. Well, um, Jephthah, um, you've heard um, the, the situation. that You live it. You get at least... Uh, Prinkoff does not live in these um, uh, facilities. Uh, CTAC does not live in the facilities that you live in. We talk about infrastructure. Really, uh, let's talk about how you're affected by this because you have to be running a double shift system amongst others. You talked about how you stay at home uh, for two to three months. Um, I'm told some of you are engaging in, in other activities and you forget what you learn amongst others. What would you say about the infrastructure? Do you think your colleges are being neglected? Oh, yes. But um, before I come to that, let me pick some words from what the... Uh, CTAC president said, you know, I was, I was saying that I had a comment to make from what Professor mm -hmm. Tintono said that the students are well prepared mm -hmm. and ready to sit for the exams. You said alternative measures were put in place for you. However, to I, I, so I would like to unequivocally state that it's like they've molded us as pots from clay without polishing. 
yet they are applying heat onto us and they want us to do good markets. Speaking in parables. Oh, yes. You know what I'm saying? That the inconsistency in the flow of teaching and learning as has been hijacked by the double shift or as people say the double track system have put the level three and rest I'm talking about the third years for more than two months at home when they came to have only six weeks and that six weeks would definitely be under pressure because they will not have enough time to do more they've gone home and most of them have been exposed to other ways of making money for themselves just as he said mm-hmm. and you cannot blame them I have friends whom who would definitely go to Galamsi sites to make money, others are engaging in other training, training activities. And it is of no doubt that it will leave their conscience of academic pursuits before they come back to do another six weeks. And it is married or we see another strike action coming in as a challenge. Yet, we are saying that they, are, they should go and sit for the exams. So, we have done the molding, but the polishing, mm. I am much concerned about the revision, the little touches that we should do before we go and sit for examination, it has not been done. Okay. But tomorrow, they must sit for the paper. The issue happened last year. You know, I'm sad. I was saying that certain issues happen. We don't find lasting solutions to it. It comes to happen again. Last year, it happened. Students stood that we will not write the examination because we had not covered a lot of the academic content. But they were expecting us to still go and write the exams. Some of, some of the students didn't write. And you know what happened? In the following year, that is this year, we had to come back and write the same examination we didn't write. As a matter of fact, we were comp- some of us were compelled, especially the, the colleges affiliated to UCC, were compelled to pay for their own feeding. Something they didn't cost, just because they didn't compromise to do what they could not do. That is where we find ourselves now. Now, back to the infrastructure thing. I, I believe that... Government implementing the four-year beard program okay. had in mind that definitely, just as it was uh, uh, envisaged by certain, uh, some stakeholders, that the numbers would increase, and therefore you should look out for infrastructure expansion. That has not been done. Yes, the policy of the four-year beard program has been implemented. But I want to state this for everybody who is a Ghanaian to know this, that I believe that it's only colleges of education who are doing this double shift, what someone will say double track. It's hap- it happens nowhere. Only colleges of education. People we are training to come and be educators and to be master crafts in their busy schools to impact knowledge for the future of our country to be protected because we say education is the future of the country. We are going through this. I will not talk at length. We were at GTEC. That was some two, two months ago, addressing this challenge. We didn't just want to go there presenting the challenge and coming back and expecting them to work magic out of it. But we were raising with our team before going, them and going to meet them and presented a white paper addressing the challenges. It looks like there's a, a lot of white papers when it comes to the colleges of education. No, Yet for, we for, for the purpose of references, yes. You know, we, we stated the problem we are facing. Because if it happens that there's congestion, me in my college, they are watching me. I don't think anybody there, or if you happen have the chance to go and see what is happening there in the hostels, you cannot say it's hostel. Mm. You can't even say it's a dormitory. How much more a hostel? Mm. So we know what we are going through, and therefore we came out with suggestions that can help to control the problem. We believe that government had implemented, had, had started this 300 bed facility hostel, but we, we cannot continue to put our trust and hopes in rootless facets because. It's supposed to have been completed this year. It didn't happen. We don't know what is happening next year. I'm telling you, it can happen that the story may be the same next year. Well, we it have, is possible. We've, we've been giving assurances that maybe the next year, That's so nice. another year extension it should happen. So what if next year the problem persists and we, we continue to give a hope that the following year? So you know what we did? We proposed to GTEC that we believe that we can control the intake of student teachers in the hostels by implementing the day status as it happens in secondary schools, so that even on admission, students who wish to rent for themselves can, can just select their status, and by admission, they will not be on campus. They will stay from, they will, they will come to school from their various homes. Mm-hmm. I live in a community that is not far away from where my college is. I'm from Bialampreta College of Education. 
And I can tell you that I have friends and colleagues who are even renting because of the pressure we have in the hostels. Mm. And the college management wouldn't seize us okay. because it's a way to ease them. Jephthah, I can promise you this, at least. Um, listening to you, you paint the real picture of what is on the ground in terms of the colleges of education. So my promise to you is that we need to do this again, just with um, TTAG and maybe some of your colleagues. That's so great. we can be very take glad. a look at the situation uh, on the ground. At least uh, speaking, I felt that this is a good time to just uh, wrap it all up. But let me give um, the final words um, to uh, Prinkoff and then we'd speak to Larry and then uh, Prince on this. But that's a promise I'm giving you. So we, Thank we, you. we delve deeper into the situation on the campuses, at least hearing uh, from the students themselves. But really, um, and, uh, Professor Tintono, so listening to um, the students, really, my heart is broken, I should say. Um, is there a way out of this situation? Your students are watching you. They, they really want to know, out of this situation, when exactly will it all end such that we won't gather again to be talking about uh, colleges of education? It appears that we've been relegated uh, to the background. Thank you very much, and uh, I do feel, just as my students spoke, Jeff Tesco, well worried as a uh, principal of the College of Education. Uh, it is true that somehow uh, it appears when the college is trying, you know, transition from the Ghana Education Service, that's a pre tertiary status to the tertiary level, not much has been done. And uh, this is not new in this country. Uh, you recall that for, uh, for techniques, when they started and they had to move to even technical universities today, uh, they still have certain challenges. That's why I see our situation. Uh, I, as much as I appreciate the problems expressed by Jephthah, okay. uh, I kept on saying, as president, I should think that both TAC and uh, CETA and Prinkoff need to sit together. We are in the species and we are suffering. Uh, at Clark College, we even have a bigger problem because it was a day college. Okay. Now, I'm happy. Uh, TAC is the one saying that, yes, they are prepared to go, uh, you know, yeah. some beyond D, mm -hmm. because I've seen their right. I think it's been so long. But that's where I raise the issue that there's no reason why, after where we are, we should still say that all the students should be in residence. Yeah. So uh, we all have to speak the same voice. Go make an appeal to the Ministry of Education and all those who are concerned, devoid of politics. This okay. is what I will Okay. I'll share one minute amongst oh, okay. uh, Larry and... Um, Until we are and, and, on that one, right. we'll continue okay. to have this kind of things around. Okay. Um, Larry, I'll give you 30 seconds uh, and then... Print. Print. Prof, I, uh, Prof, I'll have to are. really when wrap it up on this. We, you seem to be breaking. Prof, we, your line seems to be breaking, so we're in okay. hearing you. But let me give the final word to Larry okay. and, uh, and Prince on this. Um, Larry, it looks like um, Colleges of Education, from what I'm hearing, is unattractive because of the way uh, we, we are managing the situation. Briefly, you're, you're, you're wrapping up a word, and then we can, we can wrap this up. Yes, yes. Uh, MFR is refreshing hearing all the panelists, especially the TAC president, the CTAC president, and even the Prinkoff president, speak passionately about the issues that are affecting them in the colleges. Mm. I, I was just smiling listening to them, because these are the realities on the ground. And as the Prinkoff president rightly said, this is a time we need to put our political lenses aside and yeah. address the situation. Okay. Seriously, if okay. not, look, the colleges have undergone a lot of transformation okay. from diploma to degree now. And this is the time to consolidate these gains with the needed attention that they deserve. Okay. We really have to go at this point. Thank you so much, Prince. I didn't give you the final word, but we'll talk again. Thank you so much. And that's it for tonight's edition of The Probe. We've been focusing on colleges of education. For our radio audience, we have a walk of Jesus. I am MFR Power. Another edition comes your way same time Sunday. Have a good evening.